everybody. Welcome to Lesson 12.2. Sorry about the darkness, but um, we're going to be doing histograms today, as you can see. And there's kind of a glare that gets on there, so I'd rather you not see me in this handsome face and see the board a little more clearly today. All right, so you're going to be able to construct and analyze histograms. What's a histogram? Let's find out. Here we go. So here's a chart of a histogram. And some people might call this a bar graph, but they are incorrect. It is not a bar graph. And if you can't read these words or if you don't want to listen to me talk, this is on page 872 in your book. All right, so what makes a histogram? Well, first thing is there is no space between the bars. As you can see, every bar is touching. Although there is no bar right there, but we'll see why. But there is a space for a bar. All right, first rule with a histogram, the bars have to touch. Next, because all of the interval intervals are equal, all of the bars have the same width. And that is huge. What does the word interval mean? Well, it's kind of like a grouping. It's about um, how far one number is to the next. So I know it's hard to see right here, but this says $25 to $49.99. And remember, this is cost of different remote control airplanes. So some remote airplanes cost 20, in between $25 and $49.99. Well, how far apart is 25 to $49.99? 25, 35, 45, that's $20, $24.99. So each space is $24.99. All right, this is from $50 to $74.99, $24.99. This is from $75 to $99.99, $24.99. So the intervals are every $24.99 more. Now you could choose your own intervals as you make these histograms. This is just an example. So the last part is it says intervals with a frequency of zero. They still have a bar area, but their bar height is zero. So this is their bar. It's just zero. So it is still touching. All right. So remember, intervals are huge with this because all the intervals have to be the same. All right. Not meaning the numbers are the same, but how far, the distance. Oh, 24.99, 24.99, and so on and so forth, the same thing. All right. Here we go. Now, the first step in making a histogram is to collect data. I've already done that for you. Well, your book has. This is the daily visitors to selected state parks. All right, so on one day there was 108 visitors. Another day, 209, 171. If I'm looking at all this data, my lowest number is about 108. My highest number is 320, no, 382. So I can make intervals. Now, what would a smart interval be? Now, a histogram. I don't know, you might want to have like six to eight bars on there, maybe more. You don't want to go too crazy. So I'm not going to do intervals of 10 because then that just wouldn't really work or make sense for me. I'm probably thinking we'll do intervals of 50. So any numbers between 100 and 150 could be one of our um, bars. Numbers from 151 to 200 will be another one. All right, so let's see what the book actually did. Well, they, well, actually, before we can make those, we have to organize our data. So step one was collect data, and that data is always collected for you in your book. Step two is organize your data with a frequency table. So as you can see, the book chose to do intervals of 49, all right, so, or 50, sorry, intervals of 50, because 100 to 149 is 50 numbers. All right, so... From that table, there was two between 100 and 149. Let's check out those two again. So 108, and let's see if I can find the other one. You guys probably find it before me. There it is, 137. Those two were for my first interval, all right? My next one, so there's only two from 100 to 149. I only had two frequencies. That's why it's a frequency table. My next one was from 150 to 199. I actually had seven of them. 
I'm not going to go back on the last page and find all of them, but as you can see, there is a bunch between 150 and 199. There's one, there's one, um, there's one, and there's more of them. There's seven total. All right, so when you do this, it might make sense for you to circle them or cross them off as you go so you don't repeat any numbers, just like we did last chapter. So looking at this table, we did tallies over here as we went along. All right, I already did this for you. It was done for you. They went tallies as they went along. But then they added them up and got all of our frequencies. So when we make our histogram, the numbers between the interval between 200 and 249 will be the highest. It'll be up eight. All right, it happened eight times. So we're, this is what is in your book. Now, I don't have the data in front of me, but I wanted to show you the big version, and we're going to do it on the next page. But I would take my data, my frequency um, table data, and put it over here. I think we said this one, between 200 and 249, had 8. So on my chart, I would make this one go to 8. And I'd fill it in, too. All right, but I'm not going to waste all my ink and waste your time coloring. And I'd fill in the other parts as well, and they're going to touch. So let's make one histogram together, and then you'll have one on your own. So this is the same thing you just had, but it's a little smaller now, so I can have the data with me and the table. So if you can't see it too well, this said from 100 to 149, we had it happen twice. Two days was when those numbers happened. So I only go up to the number two. And I bring it down right there, and I'd fill it in. I'm not going to fill it in and waste my ink that much, but there we go. Now, from 150 to 199, it happened seven times. So, on my histogram, I have in between frequencies in between six and eight, so seven would be right in the middle. So I'm going to remember they're touching, so I'll make sure they still touch. Should be about halfway, and I'd fill that in as well. Blah, blah, blah. Next one, 200 to 249, we had eight of them. So I go to 200 and 249, bring this all the way up to eight. Make sure I bring it down, color it in. Yay. All right, from 250 to 299, we had how many? Just one. The rest of them are just one, so that's pretty easy. I could just do one all the way. So there's, there's two, so one would be about right there, right there, and right there. And I fill these in. And there is my histogram. Notice all bars are touching. All intervals are the same amount. They're in increments of 50. Now, I didn't start at 0 to 50 because then if I went from 0 to 50, I would have had nothing all the way up until 100, I would have two blank spaces. I might as well start where my data starts. All right? Histograms are pretty cool because it gives you a nice visual look of where the highest number is. And right away, I could see that between 200 and 249 happened the most. All right? So these numbers are the highest. And then there isn't too many times where there's a ton of people coming, right? It only happened once that there was a between 350 and 399. And it only happened twice that there was a small group population. All right, most is in the middle here, between 150 and 249. All that hard work, I have to erase it now. All right, so here's your assignment for tonight. You have to make a histogram for me. The data is already done for you. Half of it is already done. We already have the frequencies, we did the tallies. This is the number of books read, all right? So students that read zero to two books, there was only six of them. Students that read three to five books, there was actually 10 of them. All right, that'll be your highest, um, that'll be your highest amount on your histogram, the tallest. Six to eight, there were seven students. Students reading nine to 11 books, there was only three. And some students read in between 12 and 14, and there was four of them. All right, so you're going to want to make intervals of, let's see, we did 50 with those numbers. Hmm. Looks like you're doing, oh, they already gave you the intervals, right? They're doing intervals of three. 
All right, so 0, 1, and 2 means 3. 3, 4, and 5, all right, 6, 7, and 8. So these will be on your bottom. When you make your histogram, these will be on your bottom. And the frequencies will be going up and down. So these numbers, all right, you're probably going to want to count by twos. So you might have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, maybe even 12, so that you can show where your last one goes to. All right, so try it out. I hope you find success. If not, we'll go over tomorrow, and I will see you soon.